so I wanted to give you guys a little overview of Electron, uh, formerly known as Atom Shell. It's a tool provided by GitHub to do cross-platform development using you know, web technologies, uh, primarily Node, and then obviously your normal front-end stack, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, um, and lately Flash is now supported also. This presentation will walk you guys through and kind of show you some of the features that Electron provides. Um, so first off, what is Electron? Electron is going to allow you to build cross-platform apps using Chromium and Node.js as your back-end server and HTML, CSS, and JavaScript for your front-end rendering technologies. Uh, it's open source and it's maintained by GitHub. Uh, originally, Electron was part of Atom Shell, which was a module for the Atom IDE that GitHub has recently released. Um, and they basically just open sourced that piece and then it ended up growing into its own package, <clears throat> which at this point it's a pretty stable package uh, and it includes a lot of awesome tools. So Electron apps can be built on Mac, Windows, Linux. Um, there's packaging tools available to help you get you know, your .app files and uh, binary executables for Linux and, and executable files for Windows. Um, and there's also a Windows installer tool that will allow you to create a Windows installer to package your app with. Electron basically has two components. You have your back-end server and then your front-end. With the back-end is your main entry point. It loads up the app, and you know most of the main entry point code for an Electron app is going to be opening your main window and pointing it at a URL, which is going to be a local URL pointing at your file path in your uh, your app itself. So Node starts up, you fire up a web view, and you point it at you know, your index.html file, which loads React or Angular or Knockout or whatever JavaScript framework you're using on the front end. Um, the back end itself, you can use native mode modules. Uh, Electron is compiled with a separate, a different version of V8 than the official Node uses, so you have to, a little bit of work to install native Node modules, but a regular old NPM install plus another line to set the local headers is all you really need. Um, and it's pretty basic. Uh, and that entry point there that's controlled by Node is part of the app module for Electron, which handles uh, you know, accessing your jump list on Windows, recent documents, your doc in OSX, your progress bars, uh, various items like that to interact with the OS itself. Um, and then the app module itself also allows you to launch Chromium uh, and specify what flags you want for Chromium. So you can you know, enable or disable different V8 plugins like WebRTC and various others. And then the front end side is you know, everything, every window is rendered as a web view in Chromium. Uh, you know, you're going to have HTML, CSS, JavaScript support, anything that would really be supported in, in Chromium or in V8. Is going to work there. Um, you have your HTML5 canvases, which includes WebGL. Um, you can do some pretty cool cross platform game development also uh, using WebGL. And more recently, they added Flash support using Pepper Flash plugin, which uh, basically just allows you to create web views that load Flash objects. So you, know, you, know, you can bundle your Flash app using Electron or just include a Flash plugin as part of your app itself. Um, so all those technologies are available, and there's helpers to get started with all of them. Um, so Electron itself is really, you know, a folder structure and a set of Electron modules for coordinating your your windows and loading web views into those windows. Um, so let's go through some of these modules. Um, starting with the screen module, the screen module allows you to get different information about the screen size, your displays, filter position, what display is active. Um, it's an event emitter. All you really have to do is, you know, require app screen here, require screen, and then, you know, screen.get primary display. Uh, that'll get you whatever display they have set as their primary. So on a Mac, it's whichever one they have their dock on, or whichever one set as their primary for their dock, and, and Windows and Linux and all work a little bit differently, but all of those are going to have some sort of primary toggle. You grab that and get the size of the display. 
And then this little snippet of code here is just building a new window using the size of the display. So you're going to build a full height screen. Um, this bottom one down here will actually search through all of your displays until it finds one that is not the current screen. Uh, and it'll return that display and then you create a new window on that external display. So a lot of control there um, as to where you open windows, what size they are when they open, um, what screen they show up on, and then you have some various tools for, you know, if they have multi-displays, you can check that and maybe provide a separate interface for multi-displays and then you can uh, or just, you know, move the windows around. Um, so that's the screen module. It's got some other features too. Uh, you can kind of filter screens, so you can do a query where width is greater than, you know, 1920, and that'll give you a screen that does at least 1080p or above. Um, so things like that. You can do a couple of cool little queries in there to filter out displays and find which one you want. Um, but generally, all you're doing with the screen once you've found it is creating a window on that screen. So onto the menus module, there's a menu and a menu item module in Electron. They both are there for interacting with uh, operating system native file menus. So over here we have a screenshot of what that looks like on OSX or Slack. Um, and basically, you know, you have all of your normal built-in functions, copy, paste, undo, um, and you can add all of those, and I think the next screen kind of shows an example here of uh, basically we require the menu module from Electron and then down here we uh, that, that template to the menu and then set our menu on the application. And the template itself is just this JSON object here which has label, uh, you know, you can do submenus in each one and then you end up with either selectors or, uh, or a click. Uh, the selector is OSX specific and it you know it refers to things like undo. You can do an undo selector instead of having to implement that yourself. Um, or you can always just do a click event and then on click specify a JavaScript function that'll, that'll fire, which is kind of what's going over happening over here on the right. You see we instead of passing a JSON object, we build each menu item specifically using the new keyword and then pass all that in, pass all the menu items into our menu itself. Um, and doing it this way allows you to specify your click function and, and you know, do actual callback handlers instead of just that. Next module is power monitoring and power save blocker module. Power monitor module uh, is either any any better than event. It's events per spin uh, on AC on battery. So you know if you're on a laptop and the cord unplugs, your app will receive an event here and you can respond to it appropriately. Um, and then power save blocker is actually meant to prevent a PC or, or laptop or Mac or whatever from sleeping itself. Two options here. You can prevent display sleep. And I think you can do uh, prevent app shutdown, something like that, which will stop your app from being quit. And then prevent display sleep will prevent you know, the computer from going to sleep or the display from starting up the screensaver while this is going. So this might be something that you want to do, like, you know, maybe you have a video player, and while you're playing the video, you don't want the display to sleep. So you have to use code similar to this, and, you know, once the video stopped, you can turn the power save blocker off, and just their settings will go back to normal. So some cool features there to integrate uh, on the operating system level, uh, but still receiving just you know, native JavaScript callbacks. Everything really simple. Um, desktop integration. Here we just have some screenshots of some of the different uh, integration areas. Um, on OS X, you can modify the context menu that shows here on your application, and you can add context to other applications. Uh, so I don't know. Maybe you have an app, like I said, that plays videos, and when you right-click on uh, I don't know, a folder of videos in your doc and allow you to send that directly to your app. So you can kind of do a little bit of app integration between your app and other apps uh, so that their context menus have shortcuts to your application. Uh, internet or Windows, you can modify the tasks 
bar that's right here, as well as the thumbnail toolbar that shows when you have over icon. Um, and again, obviously these are specific to Windows, not because they have like a thumbnail preview, but they do they do a lot of stuff that cross platform as well as you know, specific features for the OS that you might want to integrate if that's part of your target. Um, and then some Linux ones you see here, we have our task lists in Linux or launcher shortcuts. Um, and then again, in Windows and Linux over here, we're adding a progress bar to the taskbar button itself. Um, and all that's done just using native Electron modules. Uh, automatic updates. Automatic updates is an awesome feature of Electron. It's only implemented for OSXO, unfortunately, um, but it uses the Scroll Mac framework. And basically, you set up a remote server that receives a uh, GET request that will have a query parameter for the version. And then your server is supposed to respond with a JSON object that looks very similar to this one up here. That if there's an inversion, a version higher than the one that was sent in, you return this JSON object. And the automatic update module in Electron will use World Mac. You automatically fetch that code and update to that client on, on your desktop on Mac itself. All right, just a couple more uh, different modules. There's a tray module for Electron, which actually uh, manages system notifications. Uh, you can see a small example down here of how to use it. Um, clipboard, you know, you have read text and write text methods on a clipboard module, um, as well as a few others like write HTML that will actually format that properly and, and keep the uh, HTML formatting so if they paste it somewhere else, this force HTML uh, text being pasted, it'll, it'll keep that properly and not just paste all of your stuff. Um, so you can do some cool things with that. And then Global Shortcuts allows you to register global shortcuts in Windows, Linux, OS X, and register and unregister those and specify them for different uh, functions in your app, basically. Shortcut that you register is just going to have a JavaScript function that's called it's called when it's triggered. Um, makes development really really simple. Um, Electron also has some development tools built into it. It's it's V8. It's Chromium. So obviously you have your native Chromium developer tools. You can use Node Inspector by npm installing it. Uh, you can do remote debugging, or you can open a web view and point the web view. You can pragmatically open a web view and point that web view at Node Inspector um, or the remote debugger. So you can kind of open that window within your app or you can just enable remote debugging and then you know, have your own Firefox or Chrome or whatever window with your dev tools in it all over to the side. Um, and it does have support for third party dev tools like React, like the React Dev Tools extension. Um, install that do a simple add dev tools extension and point it at the directory. I'm pretty sure for this to work, you actually have to include the git repo, so you can git clone react dev tools and then point it at that repo to include in your source code for the app. And then yeah, once you include it, you can replace the you know, Chromium developers with React or any other tools that might have there. Um, and then we have the crash reporter. The crash reporter module is pretty cool. Uh, really simple to use. You just require it and tell it to start, and it'll submit uh, crash reports with full stack traces to a remote server, which is a submit URL. So you set up a remote server that just accepts those. Accepts those, and uh, you know you can have that enabled when or during actual uh, in your actual release versions, so that you get crash reports as they happen, or uh, you can actually hook into this and kind of build like a crash reporter dialog. So if something happens, it pops up and asks the user if they want to send it, uh, send it along. So some cool features there that you know are things that are, are needed in desktop applications, but I haven't seen them before in cross-platform development, at least for HTML and, and JavaScript stuff. Um, that's great. Uh, automated testing, since, again, since we're using Chromium, we're using V8. We can just fire up Selenium and point it directly at our app. Um, and we can fire up Selenium from within our app. And, and you know, 
as part of our unit tests or our integration tests. Uh, run Selenium and do our integration testing there. Uh, and it's as simple as just pointing it at your page. As, as long as you're running Selenium inside your app, it can see those URLs and it can do what it needs to do. Um, and generally, your app is bundled with an a, a Node API that you can also ping. So you know, it's kind of everything's already there. You don't have to go stand up an API for integration tests and then do Selenium tests using that. You just stand up your app, run Selenium, and it's good to go. Your API, API is already stood up. Your front end is already available. Um, it's really nice. So you can do a lot of automated front end tests here. Um, using Selenium. And packaging apps. So Electron uses the Atom Shell Archive to package applications. Um, and Atom Shell Archive, like a lot of the pieces of Electron itself, were all developed as uh, modules of Atom during the original development of Atom. And now that that's complete, they started reusing a lot of the stuff that they learn and creating open source modules for some of the packages while decoupling them from Atom itself. Uh, so the Asar archives are interesting. They're, they're similar to TAR for all intents and purposes. You can think of them as TARs. Uh, but the good thing about them is once you've created this Asar uh, compressed package, you can still read from that. And the node APIs in Electron are modified, so things like FS read file will automatically kind of expand the path. So if you give it a path, but that path is inside the SR archive, it'll still find that file properly, um, as long as you're using you know, FS read file or something that wraps that. Um, and so it really treats your SR as a virtual directory, but the SR archive itself, my understanding is it's encrypted and compressed. So you're saving on file size and you're trying to obfuscating code also. So provides a couple of nice features right there. And, and both the front end and the back end uh, node and JavaScript modules can both read those star packages without any problems. So server side and, and web client and the web views can access those files. You can keep your images in there, your source code, uh, even like SQLite databases can be stored inside of there. And they'll benefit from you know, encryption and compression. Um, and then finally, once you build your Electron app, you end up with a uh, .app file, a Linux binary file, or a .exe for Windows, which you can then use for distribution. You know, you can package the, the .app file up in a DMG and, and set it for download on your site, or uh, the Windows.exe, you can, again, just allow people to download that, or you can then bundle that .exe. A Windows installer, um, which I haven't actually done with Electron yet, but it is there is functionality there to help you build a installer that'll move the files into the right place and drop your exe into the right place also. Um, any of you guys that are familiar with NWJS or Node WebKit, um, I took a look at Node WebKit before I found Electron, um, and I think Electron's far superior. Um, and I pulled a couple points from the Electron website as to the differences here. Um, but one of the main differences that I see is that in, in Node WebKit, when your application starts, you a web page launches, and then your index.html files auto-load. And, and that's your entry point. Your entry point in Node WebKit is index.html. You load up your JavaScript, and then you use APIs to coordinate any uh, window management that you need to do. But Node WebKit's really a single window, and there are hacks to get around it. But uh, it's really meant for a single window. And, and any additional windows, you're creating more JavaScript context, uh, and you're basically recreating an instance of V8 running. So th there's benefits. To, to using Electron over Node WebKit just as far as performance goes. Um, you're not duplicating as much code and, and you're saving some memory because you're not storing multiple instances of V8 memory when, when they're not needed. Um, you can also do menu bar applica applications with Electron. Uh, 
they work a, a little bit better in my opinion because you don't have to worry about closing anything out. By default, a Electron app doesn't launch anything. Um, so you, instead of launching a window, you just you know, configure your menu bar icon and attach it to the global menu bar and you're pretty much good to go from there. You know, specify an on-click of your icon so that it opens a window and that window just positioned directly below your, your icon. So. Uh, and that's for OS X menu bar applications. You know, there's all kinds of other applications for it, but you most commonly see those menu bar apps done in OS X, I think. Um, so more, you know, Electron has a little bit tighter node integration than Node WebKit. Obviously, Node WebKit has Node in it, but Electron is, is more of a Node WebKit's more of a here's your web view, give us some HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to make it look like an app, where Electron's more of a platform that says, okay, you have a Node server running on this Linux machine or on this Mac machine or this Windows machine, and you know, create windows as you see fit or interact with the operating system as you see fit. So I feel like it, it was more intended for enterprise large platforms that are going to be built or Node WebKit kind of feels more, uh, I don't know, feels like it's less professional, I guess, because of that, because you're kind of just, it really seems like you're loading up a Chrome window without the uh, Chrome logo. Um, and then multi-context, uh, you know, swaps. creating multiple windows in Electron is handled much better than in Node WebKit. It's easier to do in the code and my understanding is the implementation's faster as they don't introduce new JavaScript context for every page. Um, and so that's about it. I got a couple screenshots here of some apps that were built with Electron. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show those off. Uh, I think all of you guys are probably familiar with Slack. It's a uh, hip chat replacement, instant messaging client or chat client. Um, there's a nice loading screen for it and the actual Slack interface. Um, and the reason I want to show these screenshots is because in the past I've, when I think of HTML5 applications um, or cross-platform applications, I always think poor design. Um, and with Electron, all the apps I've seen so far built with Electron have just been really, really good, you know, class A applications that look just as good as they run. Um, and a couple of these I, I use daily, so it's awesome. Uh, so there's the Kydomatic, if any of you guys have used this before. It's a Docker GUI for launching containers. Uh, that's the installer that comes with a bundle with it. And then over here we have the loading screen and the app itself. Um, and again, these are just to show off how nice of an application you can build using just HTML and JavaScript. And if any of you guys are familiar with Kydomatic, Slack, Atom, um, I don't think many of us are complaining about the performance of them. They, they seem to be seem to perform pretty good for their purposes. So, uh, Pixate is a prototyping tool. Um, there's its splash screen and the app itself uh, with the with the interface for developing a mobile prototype. Um, New Clyde is a Atom replacement that looks just like Atom and uses the same code as Atom. So I'm not sure what they offer here, but if one of you guys want to look it up and let us know how this differs from Atom, I would be interested, but another application built using Electron. Um, and Speak. Uh, Speak is a voice call program, you know, similar to Skype uh, or like HipChat calls, but it doesn't do video. Uh, it integrates with Slack, so if you have Slack set up and you install Speak, it kind of adds voice chat to Slack for free. So, cool little feature. Um, here you can see their their installer uh, on a Mac. It's just a DMG. Once you open it, it has this fancy uh, folder layout, and it tells you to drag the application over to this folder. And then over on the right, we have one of the actual views of the app, you know, where you click on someone to call them. Um, and then PopKey, uh, again, uh, DMG, they have a nice fancy icon, same, uh, 
you know, drag the app over here. It's just a regular .app file for Mac. Uh, and then this one's a menu bar app. So the menu bar shows up here, and once you click it, this pops up. And uh, once you click close, it gives you the option to search through GIFs. And you can quickly search a GIF, click on a GIF, and it copies that URL to your clipboard. Um, so pretty cool looking apps. Uh, that's actually all I have. I'll take any questions that you guys have.